Hello, my gorgeous, beautiful, wonderful queen bees. It is your girl, Amanda, the buzzed artist. Welcome back to my channel, a place where you can let loose and just have fun with your acrylic paint. In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to make three adorable snowmen and lady who are all caroling outside in the winter wonderland. And my queen bees, this tutorial is fun, easy, and a great way to get into the holiday spirit. So grab your brushes and come meet me. I'm going to show you exactly how to make this. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, queen bees. So we're going to start by making our background for our snow people. So we're going to start with our three quarter inch flat wash brush, dip it in some water, and then we're going to head over on the color wheel to some blue. Okay. So I'm going to take a little bit, dab it both sides of my brush, and I'm going to take a tiny bit of white. Just like to take the corner of my brush and just apply it to the white. And then we're going to add in our background. So we're just going to make horizontal strokes just like this. And I'm also going to just go back and forth, uh, just alternating between putting my brush in some water so I can drag some of the paint out and just grabbing more paint off of my plate. All right. So this is actually a new type of paper. I actually recently got it for my birthday. And it's a multi-medium paper, which I think is gonna be a lot of fun to play with. And yeah, this is also, this is really good if you are um, working with acrylics or if you're working with watercolors or if you are working in pencil first and then you want to paint on top this is the perfect medium to do so and I can already see that the paper is not like disintegrating when I'm painting with my brush and the friction of the brush going back and forth it's actually doing quite well for itself hooray it's a good present okay yeah so I'm just maintaining that back and forth motion just making sure to get the edges as best as I can. And I wanna make sure I'm about covered, maybe like a little over halfway. Yeah, I would say a good two thirds of this is covered, just like so. All right, well, I'm actually pretty happy with that. So next, we're just gonna add in some elements of snow, nothing too crazy, you just wanna do an underpainting. So I'm not even gonna rinse my brush, I'm just gonna dip it straight up into white. And I'm gonna take a little bit of water so it could help spread my paint out. And we're just gonna go ahead and apply that snow. And I'm reaching up into the blue, bringing it down, okay? Again, this goes back into blending. Blending when you're coming when you're blending your colors like to be a little wet at least when you're blending two different colors at once And I'm telling you your paint loves Being wet when they're being combined. That's their favorite thing in the entire world So I'm just painting pretty much the remainder of this painting Going from where we stop with the blue all the way down to the bottom. All right, so I'm, I guess I'm pretty happy with this. You know, I don't want to go too crazy. We're going to be, you know, adding in more details soon. So I think what we'll do next is we'll add some rolling hills, okay? So I'm just going to give my brush a rinse. Dry them off, and we're put them away for now. You've done your your due diligence. Okay, um, I'm gonna move on to our number ten filbert brush. I'm gonna dip them in some water. And we're gonna make some snow mounds. So I'm gonna dip it in some white. Again, I don't want globs of paint on my brush, just a little. And we're gonna go about halfway right here. And we're just gonna do some rolling hills. Okay, rolling hills just like so. Can you see how easy that was? Just take it nice and easy. Don't have to go too crazy with it. Maybe another rolling hill right around here somewhere. 
yeah, take your time with this. This is this is your time to just play with your brush. I'm using primarily the broad side of the brush here to help me achieve those strokes. Okay, and what's really nice about the filbert, you get those nice, crisp, clean, rounded edges because that's what your brush body looks like, right? That's a really cool thing about brushes. If you are looking for a specific kind of effect, look at the body shape of your brush, and that's pretty much what you're going to get as a stroke. So this is, if you think about like the Bob Ross trees, he has that fan brush and that helps him make really nice bushes and, and trees and whatnot because it really lends itself to making those kind of shapes. So that's always something to consider when you're choosing brushes. This The number 10 size is my favorite when it comes to just a lot of versatile applications of using the brush. So that's what I tend to use the most. Okay. Next, we're going to just add some, some stuff going on in the background here. We're going to move on to our number zero detail round brush. And you'll notice I have a new brush. Oh, this is one of my little presents that I got for my, that my well, my family got for me. <laughs> um, we're going to be making some snow swirls in the background here. So I dipped it in some water. Just going to add it back into the white here. And we're just going to go ahead and just make some curly cues like that. Okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and add a little bit more water so the paint doesn't stick so much to my brush. In fact, I'm gonna go ahead and add a lot of water to this. Okay. Now I'm gonna do quite a bit here. And sometimes I um, do kind of double wind patterns, I guess, snow swirl patterns. So usually um, I'll start at, this, at the middle part here, make another kind of swirly pattern, just like so. Don't have to go too crazy with this part, just, just enough to show that there's some snow flurries going on. Maybe some back out this way. I'm just going to keep adding more water to help assist with the paint here so it could get dragged out. See that? And you know, I'm going to move some of the... You can have fun with it. You make your tails go out a little further if you'd like. Just take this time. And you know what? I, I laid my paint down before, but I'm just going to use some water to help drag it out even further. And it actually does create this really super cool blend, just like so. Oh, cute. I love it. Yeah, water is, is so huge when it comes to painting. And I, I mean, I get the impression that we all think, oh, I need so much paint loaded up in my brush to be able to, to do what I need it to do. And that's not entirely true. You don't need that much. You just need a little at a time to really help you get those strokes that you're looking for. So you'll notice that I don't really take a lot and put it on my brush, not at all. In fact, I, I go little by little and add as I go. Because you don't want to run into the problem where you add too much paint all at once, right? It's not the end of the world if you do, but it helps avoid that problem. So Christmas is coming up. I am stoked. So um, I recently just started doing my Christmas shopping. I run into a lot of panic moments when I'm um, coming towards like the December time of the year. Um, it's only because like, oh my gosh, I have so many, you know, things I need to get for people and, you know, there's so little time <laughs> to do it all, you know? Um, so yeah, I, I found myself in a little bit of a sheer panic the other day. So I just like decided just to do a whole mess of shopping online. Of course, I don't, I don't dare go out into the department stores or do any of that Black Friday stuff. I just, I don't know. I, the thrill of the, of the hunt, at least, you know, going to a store and having to look for something for hours on end. I mean, I can see that being kind of fun. Like sometimes I'll do that when I go to Christmas tree shop because well, that place is addicting. 
But uh, for the most part, I, I'd rather just get in uh, with what I need and get out without being stopped in a million directions. That's why I like to shop online. It's a little easier for me, <laughs> for sure. So how do you guys normally do your shopping? Do you, do you go online or do you go out and brave into the world and shop? You know, so I go back in here and I'm kind of adding a little bit more to the, to the wind here. You know what? Let's do let's do another one right around here somewhere. Seems a little lonely in that that little spot here. Okay, so I think I think I'm pretty happy with that. I think I'm pretty happy with that. Well, actually, just kidding. I'm gonna go back in here. <laughs> That's pretty good. Now I'm just gonna take the same brush, dip it in some white one more time, and this time we're gonna do little dots. Okay. And this is just to represent the flurries of the snow. And I'm usually just following along the, the perimeter of where we laid our curly cues before. But you can make them kind of go out like that a little bit if you want to. And just repeat, rinse and repeat, go, go, go. So let me see, we got a lot of Christmas stuff to do this year. So um, I have my, my family's stuff that we do every single year, which is kind of the same old, we just get something for everybody, you know, my brother, mom, my dad, grandparents. But then on Ethan, Ethan's side, which is my husband, we have a whole different tradition. We have um, a secret Santa and we do a Yankee swap as well. <laughs> now this year, um, this year it's, it's going to be a little more complicated because not only do we need to do, all right, let me see if I can remember it. So we have to do a Yankee swap for one, so we, we, we go over his grandfather's house where his aunt and cousins also come as well. So there we do a um, Yankee swap. And then from there <laughs> we leave, we come, we go back to my in-laws house where we do a secret Santa as well as a, another Yankee swap <laughs> as well as stocking for one person. It used to be that my, my mother-in-law used to do a stocking for each and every single one of us, which is so adorable. But we decided, you know what, you've been doing it all these years and no one's made a stocking for you. So let's um, let's actually just all of us share the, 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 the joy of giving gifts in the form of stockings, right? So that's what we decided to do. We decided to uh, also do, do one stocking per person. Uh, amongst ourselves so as you can imagine there's a lot to think about it's a lot there's a lot of lot of joy and gift giving going around it's hard to keep straight sometimes like sometimes I think I got everybody and then I realize like oh shit I like oh shoot I missed somebody and you know you gotta go back and keep on hunting but it's all good can't complain
it. All right, so we have this part. I think it's ready to go. I'm gonna leave this I'm gonna leave this to dry for maybe five minutes and then we're gonna go back in and start to draw in our snowmen. So with the power of editing, we're gonna be ready in three, two, one, boom. <laughs> I love doing that. Okay, so now that we have a dry background, we're gonna go ahead and draw in our snowmen. You'll also have the stencil to this in the description below, so be sure to go and get that. For those of you that are sticking around and actually do this by hand, let's start with making our mama snowman. So she's snow woman, I guess. <laughs> so we're gonna start her over here with her head. So she's got a circle. That's circle one. And then we got circle two. Then, got circle three. Okay, done. Next, we're gonna do little little baby snowman. So, you, we're gonna start right around here because he's kind of small. And he's kind of overlapping with Mama Snow right now. Kind of like that. And then we'll do another one. Because he's so small, he's only got two balls on him. Wow. Ignore, I just said that. <laughs> okay, and then... <laughs> We're gonna do Papa Snow, and he's all here. So we're gonna, that's his head. He's the tallest one, right? So make sure he's kind of towering. And then we got his torso, kind of like so. And then we have his, his lower body, just kind of like that, okay? Okay, now we're gonna start to paint these guys in. We're gonna go with our number 10 filbert, dip it in water, grab that white, and then start filling it in. I gotta tell you, I was just looking for more and more ideas for paintings. And last night, I think I was on like like two hours into my search when finally I came onto this painting of um, carolers. And I thought, and I thought to myself, oh my gosh, I have never, I haven't actually done carolers yet. And I thought that would be so much fun to actually go ahead and do. And then I don't know what possessed me to want to do snowmen. Because I thought, I guess in my mind, snowmen are just kind of those mystical creatures of Christmas lore. And in my mind, I don't think I've ever seen that many caroling snowmen before. And I thought, hey, you know what? There's a first time for everything, right? So might as well just go ahead and do it. Okay. All right, Papa Snow is in. Next, we're gonna do Baby Snow. And you can just do extra coats of paint to hide the graphite pencil underneath. Or if you haven't painted on top yet, just go in, add a quick little erasing, just quick. And no big deal if you haven't erased, just add another layer of white and that should go away. Okay, so I am a huge fan of like the Rankin and Bass Christmas movies. You know, the one with the claymation. You have the, what was it? The, um, I was about to say the night before Christmas. The uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer one. And then you have the uh, Santa Claus is Coming to Town one. You have Frosty. And and I, I keep asking a lot of people this because some people don't know any other, other movies besides those Rankin-Bass movies. But one of my ultimate favorites that I grew up watching was A Little Drummer Boy. And you had the Vienna Boys Choir singing. And I absolutely loved that Rankin Bass story. It was very depressing, actually. It, it had more of a it was it was still like a kid's film, but it was like for kids of the, the 60s and 70s. So, you know, they were kind of a little the messages were a little bit more um, I don't know. I feel like just people in the 60s and 70s, like the the storytelling 
was just a bit more, I felt adult, you know? You, you touched more on, on elements. Like in the Little Drummer Boy story, Aaron, who is the name of the Little Drummer Boy, you know, he is, uh, he's very averse to humans. He hates human people um, because he had a caravan of thieves that came, that robbed his home, killed both of his mother and father. And you see, uh, you actually see his parents, you know, getting murdered in the, in the special. And I mean, obviously it's, it's done in a way that's not like completely scarring, but still it, it kind of leaves a mark on you when you were a kid. And I don't know, I don't, I can't think of many, many shows like that in more uh, recently that do stuff like that, but um, like the one I'm thinking about is like The Lion King. That, that was, I remember that was a big deal. Like to see Mufasa die. Spoiler alert, I know, I know. <laughs> For those of you that haven't seen it already, it's, uh, it's on you. <laughs> but, you know, it, it was movies like that that really had a huge effect on me. So anyways, The Little Drummer Boy was one of my favorite ones uh, of the Rankin Bass series. And it was really the, the closest one to, uh, I guess, talking about like the story of Jesus and, and all that stuff too, which I thought was also very interesting as well. You don't see that many, um, you know, popular movies of late that, that kind of hark back to like, this is the meaning of Christmas, it's Jesus is the reason for the season, you know what I mean? Like, you don't see that very much. Um, so if, if you're looking for a nice, a nice movie to watch with your children, um, I recommend Little Drummer Boy. Again, the, the murder scene of his parents really isn't graphic at all. In fact, they just... If you, if you were a little kid, you probably don't really know what's going on. Um, so, I don't think it's, I don't think it's bad that your kids are watching it by themselves if they are watching it by themselves. It has a good, it has a good story, good message for kids, especially for Christmas. All right. So I'm just gonna use my brush here to help me smooth out the edges with some white as well. Again, I'm just using the broad side of my brush to help me out with that. Okay. Just get my brush to get rinse and we'll move on. Cool, yeah. So now we have our snowmen, and we're gonna start to put in some little uh, details and whatnot. So let's start out with uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's do the hats. Actually, I'm feeling the hats right now. So uh, I'm gonna move on to my number ten shader brush. Again, it's got that straight bristle, that flat, the flat uh, ferrule. So you're gonna get some nice crisp edges. So, uh, I'm gonna move over to, let's see, what color we wanna do for Mrs. Santa, uh, Mrs. Snowman. Let's do some red, why not? That's a nice Christmassy color. So, I don't want a lot, just a little, in my brush. And to do the hat, all you're gonna do is start um, at the end here, where I made that mark, and then it's gonna end right at the top right here, okay? So, I'm just going to make a line. Connecting, connecting those two together. Okay, a little bit goes into her head as well because this is going to be her hat, her chapeau, if you will. So I want to make sure I get nice coverage, and you can always expand as needed, of course. This is going to be the brim of the hat. I just expanded it as needed. Now you can either move on to your detail brush or keep on with your um, shader, but I'm gonna move on to my detail actually, especially since I want a little more control. And then we're gonna do her hat. So that goes up like so, and then goes in like that. Okay. 
I need I can tell my brush needs a lot more water. See when your when your paint is not quite sticking together as well, you just need more water on your brush. Okay, so you already can see the paint is starting to look more cohesive, with just a bit more water. Okay, and then it's gonna connect back in, just like that. And then simply just paint it in. Again, you can use your detail or you can move on to a bigger brush to help you cover that amount of area. In fact, I might switch over because this is gonna take me forever with a detail brush. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm just going in with a detail round brush again just to just to help me get those nice crisp lines. So that's hat number one. Now we're going to go ahead and to hat number two. And this one's going to be on Papa Snow. Now Papa Snow is gonna be having one of those those black mercury hats which is very, very popular at the time of uh, the Ebenezer Scrooge, Christmas Carol era. So what we're gonna do is just we're gonna make, we're gonna take our number 10 shader brush, use the tip, make a line kind of going across like so. Then we're gonna make another line going in, another line going in, okay? And this is just representing the brim so far. Okay, and then we're going to do another line using the tip of the brush, just to make, just to broaden the brim of the hat. Feel free to move on to a number zero brush if you are just not so comfortable using the shader brush yet. Okay, and then I'm just going to take the tip of the brush, move it out, move it up and out. Just like so, and then you just connect it like so. How cute is that, right? Okay. And then you just fill it in. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Okay, so I got another question for y'all. Speaking of Rankin Bass, so I talked about the little drummer boy. Um, we also used to watch, this is another obscure one from the Rankin Bass people, and it's called Cricket on the Hearth. Anybody ever watch that? Um, I remember it, my family, for some odd reason, we were just obsessed with this movie, and it's based off of a Charles Dickens book, Cricket on the Hearth. And it's really, uh, again, it's it's kind of like, it's an older, older book. It's very Char Charles Dickens-esque, so it has a little bit of the macabre kind of sprinkled in there. But it's about this family, this woman who is in love with this, uh, I guess, a soldier of some sort. He, and she lives with her father. He goes off, the, the soldier goes off to war. And um, I guess he's... He's gone for a little while, and then news travels back that he died in battle. And the the I guess the the fiance the girl was so distraught that she literally went blind. And uh, anyways, sir, to to bring the cricket in, the cricket was the kind of the main narrator. He was kind of the guy that brought the story together pretty much told you what was going on so you can kind of figure out like oh I see these people's lives blah 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 um, I really really liked it it was very unique it was a cute story and of course it ends very very nicely with a nice twist in the end and um, I don't know that was also a very enjoyable one uh, comment below have you ever heard of Cricket on the Hearth before and what were your thoughts on that movie 
And have you ever read the book? I mean, you have Charles Dickens, who just authored so many other books besides The Christmas Carol and Tale of Two Cities, right? I mean, he did, you know, David Copperfield and Great Expectations and all this other stuff. Okay. So I think I'm pretty happy with that. You know what? I'm going to move, I'm going to make the brim of the hat maybe a little bit bigger. It's going to kind of move it up just to match the size of this hat here. <laughs> Sometimes you'll notice that, you know, you made something a little bigger than it needed to be. So you just have to adjust for size. gonna move over to our youngster here and uh, I'm gonna give him a let's see let's see let's see let's see I'm gonna give him a little green hat <laughs> kind of make him look like Carter from South Park with his green hat yeah let's do let's do green so we're gonna just dive in with our green and we'll just do a, a line going across like this okay Just like so. And then make the head kind of go in a little bit, like so. like that awesome just keep filling that part in if you don't have the color green no worries you can just add yellow and blue to make that color green very easy I just have a lot left over from I don't know where I even got this tube of green paint but um, it's one of those things like if you have it lying around might as well use it instead of it going to waste okay and then once you I'm just gonna add a bit more to the brim bring it out a little And then it's going to kind of go in like so. I'm sure you've seen some hats like this from a Christmas story. They're very simple little dome hats, just like that. Right? Okay. You just fill it in. Very easy. Okay, awesome. Alrighty, so what I'm thinking we can do next is starting to do our little noses. This part's so much fun. I always have a good time with this part. Um, so I'm gonna move to our number 10 shader brush for this. It just utilizes a lot of straight lines. So I'll make sure your brush is nicely rinsed off. <laughs> so we're gonna take some yellow and red. And we're gonna make the color orange. Okay, now again, I want to use a little bit more yellow than red because red is a very powerful color. It can really take over if you're not careful. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit of white just to help uh, mute down the color, give it more of that, that orangey vibe that's a little bit more fun. I'm just going to squeegee off the rest off my brush because I don't want a lot. Okay. Now we're going to start with Mama Snow. And we're gonna start kind of in the middle of her face and her carrot's gonna go up like so because she's moving her head up to sing that carol. So we're just gonna make two lines using the tip of the brush and then you just fill it in. Okay. 
All right, just like that. And again, if you need more control, you always can use your detail round brush, not a big deal. Okay, same with Papa Snow. Papa Snow, he... He's got that line and that line. Then it kind of goes in like this. I'm just using the tip of my brush to help me get that awesome. Now, I want to make sure Junior's hat is freshly dried off because he is going to have a carrot that's going through his hat. So what I'll do is I'll leave, I'll leave him alone for now because I want to make sure he's nice and dry for that part. So Mama Snow actually is going to have a little Christmas cloak that she's wearing. And I thought this was such a cute idea for her. So um, we're going to go back in with our shader. And uh, let's see, she's gonna be wearing close to like a maroon kind of color. So we're gonna go with some red, add in some blue. And we'll add in some white for good measure. Now let's put a little bit more red in that. I do want more royal red than anything else. That's pretty. Okay. So it starts off. She's got a, a nice collar. And again, you can use your uh, detail brush. In fact, I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to put this one aside for now. Okay. So we're just going to go ahead and add that part in. Don't worry if your scarves are coming out a little too big or too small, whatever. Just take it easy. This is paint, right? Paint, once acrylic paint dries, you can always paint on top of it. So there's no worries here. Okay. So once you got like a nice cuff, then we're going to start to put in her jacket. So I'm going to move back to my shader. Okay. So for the shader going to start kind of right around here and it's going to go down and out kind of like that and then you're going to go bring it in just like so okay just like that then you just paint it in so she's, mrs snow has got a nice cute little cloak that she's wearing. Just like that. Oh goodness, how cute, huh? Okay, so um, I'm gonna move on to the detail round brush for the second part of the cloak. The second part of the cloak, uh, I'm just gonna accentuate this part right here. But the second part of the cloak, it's just gonna come out this way. Just like so, nothing crazy. And again, I'm just using my detail round brush. Let me get at the details a little bit here. I love it. Now, Papa Snow is gonna have a little scarf on him. So we're gonna go ahead and make that. So let's see, I'm trying to think what color to make Papa Snow. You know what, let's just go with blue, why not, right? So I'm just gonna take some blue, just straight up blue. I'm just gonna make sure I got a lot of water on my brush here. Okay. And for Papa Snow, we're just gonna start right at, the, at his collar here. And using the flat part of the brush, we're just gonna move it 
across like so. Nice and easy. Okay. And once you have that, then you're going to reload your brush, make sure it's nice and loaded, wet, ready to go. And then you're going to take it at the edge of your scarf here and then move it out like that. Just like that. In fact, I'm just gonna thicken it up a little bit. And then I just use the tip of my brush and dab a little to help me get the fray of the, of the little scarf. How cute is that, you guys? Seriously, you don't need to have a degree in art. You don't have to be God knows what in order to be a painter, right? I mean, let's be real here. And you know what? I'm thinking I want to do another one in the back here using the tip of my brush this time. And again, just like so. I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay, let's check Junior's hat here. He, well, he's almost dry, so. You guys loving this so far? Oh, I think they are so cute. I freaking love them. Okay, so let's move on to Junior's um, hat, or we're gonna do his nose. So I'm just gonna grab my detail round brush. Again, we're gonna use the color orange here. Lots of yellow, a little bit of red with some white. And I'm gonna make him singing this way. You can always tell where they're singing by the direction of their noses, right? <laughs> Okay, so now that we've gotten this part in, I'm going to stop you with the paints for now and we're going to move on and actually start to draw in our details with a marker. Or you can always go and use a black paintbrush. So I'm going to go ahead and get grab my set of markers. All right, just grabbed my set of markers. These are brand new. Oh, I cannot wait to use these. So I'm going to start, this is the, the brush tip. So hopefully this will do what I think it's got to do. <laughs> so here we go. So yeah, I'm just going to start to just add in the details here. Oh yeah, this is lovely. Okay, cool. Awesome. Okay, so let's start with uh, Papa Snowman here, and he's going to have two closed eyes. Okay, and to represent closed eyes, all you got to do is just make two little loops like that. That's it, okay? And they're singing, so mouths open, just like so. How cute, right? And then they got the little tongue on the inside. And then they're just, just gonna fill that part in, just like so. Oh, I love it, I love it, I love it, okay. And guess what, we'll do the same with Mama Snow. Baby snow, it's the same thing. Oh, that's so cute, I love it. Okay, there's one more thing we're gonna be, I guess one more set of details we'll be adding in. So they're holding a banner. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna go ahead and draw the banner. So we're gonna make maybe about that size. And it's gonna stop right around here, I think. So.
just like so. Okay, and then they got their arms coming out. Okay, Papa Snow's got a little glove. Then Mama Snow's got her glove coming out this way. Okay, and we'll paint and we'll go ahead and paint over that, but I just wanted to go ahead and establish it. Okay. And let's proceed to make an outline around everything. And I'm going to start to do the details on Mama on Mama Snow. Yeah. So I'm just taking my brush. Adding in that detail. Just like so. So I'm kind of giving her a little, little collar. Some lines. And then we're gonna just go to her nose. Same with the hats. Oh, this is fun. You got your pretty you got your own coloring book here pretty much, right? All right, so I'm going to go back to my hat here. Just like so. You guys, our little snowmen are awesome. Okay, and then we're just gonna accentuate the rolling hills in the background here. Add some details to the carrots. Too cute. Now I want to go back in and add a few other extra details here and there. So we're gonna go back in and just add in some of the color onto the mittens so we can cover those lines. So I'm just gonna use, you can use whatever brush you're feeling comfortable with. I'm just gonna use my Filbert just to help me cover a big area first. And then you can always go back in with your detail. Maybe some blue for Papa for Papa Snow's mittens. So let's go ahead and add a little bit more details and whatnot. Let's go to our Papa Snow's hat. So I'm just going to dip into some white. And then 
again. I'm gonna need a lot of water to help drag the color. And painting on paper is not that easy for sure. Okay, I'm gonna go add a little little floof to the tip of Mrs. Snow's hat. Just like so. And there's also a little brooch here. I'm gonna put holly berries and leaves there. So we're gonna just use a detail brown brush, dip it into some green. And to make the holly leaves, you just make, you just make three lines, kind of going out like so. One, two, three, like that. And we'll do another one. One, just like that and you know what? we'll put one on mr. snow's hat as well I'm kind of feeling it so we'll do one two, one two three two three we'll do another one, one two three two three just like so and maybe one more just like that. And then we'll add the berry leaves. Three red dots. Make sure my brush is not too wet when I'm doing this. And we'll do one, two, three. Just little dots like so. This is adorable. I'm loving how this came out. And you can go in here and write any sort of message that you want that's Christmas related. So I'm just gonna write... Just like that. Pretty simple, but you can write any message in here that is of your choosing, really. Um, you can write your family name on this. You can write, um, like, lyrics to a Christmas song, like, Joy to the World. You can pretty much do a lot of stuff with this. Or you can have them sing Frosty the Snowman. It's all, it's all up to you, really. And let's not forget their little buttons, right? So we'll just go ahead and add buttons to Papa Snow. And maybe we'll add a few buttons for Mama Snow as well. Just like that. Awesome. Now, if you really want to go the extra mile and add a couple more snow flurries and whatnot, you can take a brush, or in my case, I actually brought out a toothbrush. I'm going to dip it in some water, and we're going to make snow flurries. So I'm going to dip it into some white, just like so. And then you're just going to flick with your brush. And that's how I'm going to create some nice looking snow. That's pretty much it. So you just have to keep it keep it nice and simple. If you want to go ahead and add some add some snowfall, this is a perfect time to do so. And then you can always go back in with your detail round brush and add in more snow specks, as much as you please.
And that's how you can go ahead and make your very own snowman family. I hope you enjoyed that. My queen bees, how much fun was this tutorial? If you guys enjoyed this, please be sure to give this video a like and to subscribe to my channel, hit that like button, you know what to do so that you can see more fun tutorials from me to you in the future. Oh, and one more thing, if you want to buy this print, you can check out my online store in the description below. I really hope that you guys are enjoying the holiday month series and I look forward to doing some more tutorials alongside with you. Remember everybody, love yourselves and always have fun with your acrylic paint. See you next time, bye.